Hello everyone, let's take a look what is the federated learning. Nowadays, people use mobile devices for shopping, searching, writing, planning, and more. Many informative data are stored in the devices securely. Federated learning is a secured and efficient machine learning training by keeping the data in the device without collecting data to centralize the server. So let's see how it works. The first step is just same as normal machine learning model. We train the first model from the server, and we deploy the model to each device. Now John, Jane, Joey, they have the same model, which is the blue diamond as you can see here. And each device is now trained from each device using their local data. So John has his data, Jane has her data, Joey also has her own data. So after the training, they have their own model update. So you can see the yellow diamond for the John and the green diamond and the red diamond there. They are sending this model update to the server. And the server is just averaging these values and apply this averaged value to the next model. Now the server has the next model, which is the pink diamond there. And the server is deploying this second model to the device. Now each device has the same pink diamond in it. That means it has the same model. We can repeat this process uh, from step 2 to step 6 here until we have the smartest model. That is the basic of the federated learning. So why federated learning? Uh, most data are in device, not in the server. That's the reason. And your privacy is mostly important. We cannot just send your privacy information to the server. So rather than sending data, what if we just train from the device? That's the basic idea. And uh, after we train from the device, uh, we send the model parameters to the server. Model parameters are weights and bias, sometimes gradient. They are just numerical value. It doesn't have your sensitive information. So it is okay to send to the server. That's the basic. Okay. So you have human ghost uh, mobile here. So since we have a lot of data here, by averaging these model updates, you can get the, the best model from the federated learning. And the performance is almost similar with the best model, which is trained on the collected data. I can show you in the later slide as well. Uh, you may have a question that uh, how the each device can train with the local data if it is the supervised learning. That's a very great question. Well, we need a label for the data. If the supervised learning, the labels on the data can be inferred naturally from user interactions. Uh, if you cannot, maybe you have some difficulty with uh, federated learning. Well, how to send to server? There are mainly two ways. Uh, the research paper is talking about the federated uh, stochastic gradient descent and the federated uh, alg uh, averaging algorithm. So federated averaging algorithm is improved way of the federated uh, stochastic gradient descent. Let's talk about the federated SGD here first. Take away devices send the gradients or the parameters to the server and the server averages gradient or the parameters and apply to the new parameter. And uh, we expect frequent communication between the device and server than the federated AVG. And this is a knife than the federated AVG. Uh, here's the way how the federated SGD is working. Well, this is when C is equal to 1. I can explain what is a C uh, after I dis uh, explain this one first. So, John. Jane, Joey, they train uh, locally and uh, they can calculate the gradients. So we have the G1, G2, and G3. And eventually the server will collect the G1, G2, G3. Uh, it can get the average by calculating G1 plus G2 plus G3 over 3 here. So we have the average gradient there. And using the gradient descent, the new weight will be old weight minus learning rate times uh, the average gradient here. And this is when C is equal to 1. Uh, the C stands for how many uh, clients you want to use. So 1 means like 100%. So when the C is like a 0.66, then since we have three devices here in the example, we just use two devices per one communication here. Uh, that's how you can understand C value here. And uh, instead of the gradient, you also can send the parameters, right? Why don't you send out the parameters? 
uh, after you calculate the gradient, you just do the gradient descent from each device and you can get a new update, new weight value per device for John, Jane, Joey. That's the W1, W2, W3. And you also can average this value and just replace the W old value with the W new value from the server. That's the basic idea. Oh, wait, wait. So can't we apply mini batch on Fed SGD? Why not? Now we can update the weight value. Well, we can have the apple count and the batch size. That is the basic of the mini batch. So we can do it. And so this is the basic of the federated AVG. So this is nothing but having the mini batch from the device. Here's the takeaway. Uh, device itself to iterative training and update parameters using the gradient descent and the device send the parameter to the server and server uh, averages parameter and apply to the new parameter and uh, it turned out that the federated AVG has less communication than the federated SGD uh, because you can compare with the mini batch with the stochastic uh, gradient descent so by uh, having the epoch you can have something like optimized wave value uh, from each device so you can have you can reach out something like the uh, smartest model with uh, less communication than the federated uh, stochastic gradient descent and can result in better performance than the federate uh, SGD with proper hyperparameters, C, E, B. I already explained the C here. E is the epoch and the B is the batch size. So here's the example of the federated AVG here. Well, we have the W1, W2, W3, and the W new value is just averaging uh, W1, W2, W3, and we replace W old with the W new here. So you can see this when the C is 1 and the epoch is 1 and uh, we, if we use a whole batch then it is exactly equal to the federated uh, stochastic gradient descent here. But if we have more epoch count and uh, less uh, batch size then uh, you can expect that this is kind of mini batch from the each device and uh, it's efficient way than just uh, federated stochastic gradient descent. Okay. So here is the result from the research paper. So you can see there is MNIST CNN 99% accuracy. So the target is 99% accuracy. And you can see uh, CNN, Fed, SGD, FED, AVG here. And uh, if E is 1, B is infinity, then you can see this is just a federate SGD here. And if not, you can see there, uh, these are the federate averaging here. And the, uh, the IID value is something like when the device has something like uh, identical information. So something like uniformly distributed information from the device. But this is, not the, uh, this is not the real situation, maybe ideal situation. The real situation, each device has own data. Say, John has something different behavior than the Jane. So normally the device has like non-IID data. Every device has something like specific information. So you better see the non-ID ID than the IID here. So let's just take a look at the non-IID here. So FED SGD sometimes better than the FED average here. That means the hyperparameter is very important here, but you can see the eventually Fed average has better value than the FED SGD. So this number on under the non-IID is uh, communication count. So less communication count means it's a faster converging algorithm. So you can see the very end of this MNIST CNN, you can see the federate uh, average uh, has 173. Uh, which is like a 2.8 times faster than the federated SGD. So this is how you can understand this chart as well. And they also uh, uh, they also has the uh, experiment with the Shakespeare LSTM here. The target is 54% accuracy, predicting the next character from this Shakespeare. So you can see from the non-IID, the Fed SGD has a 34 and 06 while the federate averaging has just 41, which is 95 times faster than the federate SGD here. And this chart is to understand how the federate learning is efficient. So you can see this blue line is SGD. And uh, the thing is like the federate averaging is a little bit less test accuracy than just single SGD here. But it's very similar, it's very similar. So. Uh, 
thinking about the privacy, we can we can we can keep the privacy information, but just training from the each device and just collecting the, the model updates. So much less privacy information, but we keep the very similar test accuracy with SGD. That's the power of the federated uh, learning, I believe. And uh, the Google uh, recently announced that the federated learning now supported in the TensorFlow. So TensorFlow enables you to simulate the federated learning and you don't need to buy thousands of the device for your study or work. That's a great news. And if you, have, if you need more information, you just go to the tensorflow.org and the federated, then uh, you can see the code and the collab and uh, enjoy your federated learning with the TensorFlow. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.